Welcome back, Dream Builder. Now, hopefully you've had some time to digest all of the nuggets that Marshawn gave in the first part of this episode, but we want to jump right back into it for part two. And again, I hope you have your pen and your pad out because I know that I'm taking notes and I hope you are as well. This is game changing information. Let's go ahead and jump right in. One thing that I want to know for anybody that's watching and listening, you've felt like you've always been in the spotlight and you've always been someone of authority and presence. So let's talk about that in the terms of having a marriage. What was it like? Did you ever struggle with the relationship balance of this or was your husband always the person that knew I have a queen alongside of me and I have to let her blossom? Hmm. Yeah, we had talks about this a lot while we were dating, but I had been, I had had a a backup. I had a previous engagement a little over 10 years ago. And I called that, not just the engagement, but the wedding off six days before the wedding. It was a Monday morning before Saturday wedding because I discovered my fiance was cheating on me while he's on the plane to Atlanta for wedding week. Mm -hmm. It's a good story. It's inside. (laughs) It's how Believe Bigger opens up. So you can see how that all went down and why I'm grateful for Homeland Security so that I'm not talking to you through bars right now. And actually still as a free woman, I understand how certain things that we go through can cause us to snap and create stress, mental anxiety because of relationships. We don't talk about that. We're not crazy. We have been traumatized. So coming from that, and then also when at the top of our conversation, when I talked about knowing who you are, when you ask the question, who is, who are you behind the S on your chest? Right. I had to do some real deep work around understanding how could I show up in life where I wasn't trying to show up as valuable. Mm. Like, how can I, how, who am I if I'm not helping you? Who am I if I'm not of service? Because when you do that, you'll find someone who only wants you for what you do. And that can be dangerous in a marriage. That's not what you want. (laughs) That's not what you want. And so I did a lot of work on that. And I think it was through that I was able to have eyes to first see my husband as the, the first, I won't say the first person that had his type of spirit and personality, I probably encountered that along the way, but didn't have eyes to see it. And it would be the guy that I would say, oh, I wasn't interested in him. I don't know what it is. I'm not interested. Because sometimes when, like when women tell me today, oh, I'm not interested or that's not my type. When you say it's not my type, your type is usually a part of your negative archetype, the way that you pick. Mm. You've got You've got a bad picker because your type is usually attached to, I won't, I'll try not to use too much Ian Lu terminology, but a pathology or a way that you have been trained to show up out of avoidance. So a lot of things we say we want in somebody else is a reflection of what we're afraid we'll never get. Mm -hmm. So then you're attracting someone into your life who could actually be, is actually being attracted to your fears and you say it's what you want and you say it's your type. Anyway, doing this work helped me understand a lot of uh, misaligned thinking that may have got me to where I was but it also got me to where, may have got me to where I was in a positive way, in a powerful way, in a very successful way. But I had to accept responsibility that although it wasn't my fault that I was involved with someone who was a cheater, it's not all he was, but that was what his behavior was. And it was a lot more than what I realized. I had to accept responsibility that there was something in me that attracted that, not from a loathing standpoint, but as I need to figure out what I did to attract this, not... I deserve this, but I don't want this anymore. So you got to become serious about that. So when I did the work and it's still a process, I started to meet new people. And when I met the person that people or guys, I should say, that were maybe similar to what my initial type was, I had eyes to recognize I was going down a regular path again. Mm. Not a bad, there's nothing anybody else would be able to say was wrong with this, this person. I had to know what what the attraction was that was miscalibration. And when you're becoming a new person, your old person is still really there. (laughs) Right. And there's a choice. There's a choice. So am I going to lean into what I've always done and my type, which is my habit, is another way of thinking about that, rephrasing that, my habit, my natural inclination. Now, if that's your natural, that's because it's become natural to you. It doesn't mean it's a part of your, your destiny unless you choose to make you're old, your destiny. Anyway, I meet my husband and he's a psychotherapist. He already helps people. He's a speaker. We do a lot of similar things, but he had a conversation with me one day. He says, I want to talk to you about money. 
And I want to let you know that the size of your business, what it is that you do, I'm not intimidated by it. I celebrate you. The, the day that we met, actually, do you know who Paul Carrick Brunson is? I don't. Uh-uh. Oh, you got to know. Oh, I got I'm going to connect you with Paul. <laughs> I got to connect you with Paul. Paul's our, my brother from another. But Paul had this event. He had just, he had the show with Oak on the OWN Network. He just released this book. My husband, now husband, this guy I sit next to, we sat next to each other at Paul Carrick Brunson's event. And that's how we met. And the first thing that he says to me, he says, uh, cause two ladies, while we were talking, turn around and says, Marshawn, I just want to let you know, I really appreciate what you posted the other day. It's really helping me, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, so what do you do? Cause he's like, how do people know who you are? What right. do you do? And I told him I author a little bit. And he, first thing he says, you go girl. I'll never forget that moment because I realized it was the first time just from such a pure place that a man had just been excited and not intimidated that he wasn't the most popular thing in that little space in the moment. Right. And everything about our relationship has been that he actually closed down his, he's one of the highest paid therapists in the country. He closed down his practice to help me in my business so we could work together. And that's when we really exponentially increased our, our multi-million dollar company together. And uh, even right now, the reason I'm able to talk to you and we don't have a day nanny is that he's watching our triplets right now. Yes. So we work as partners. And as we got married, our hashtag in 2014 was purpose partners. It's become really popular now. I don't think that you can find the person and a lot of women look for someone who can cover them, who can support them and champion them. You've got to start recognizing, is your type off? Is it attached to your old habits? And these things, your relationships are, are, are attached to your ability to reach your dreams. Let's mm. just not be, let's just not be unclear about that. Your proximity of people is going to influence who you become and what will block you from believing. Relationships are very important. Who you tie your, your life to spiritually and physically, it makes a difference on who you are and who you become. You want to be with someone who's going to help you to evolve into a better version of yourself because it is a powerful, beautiful thing. Being a mom now, I feel like it's evolving me into someone that I'm like, I'm excited to meet her. I right. want to meet who this Marshawn is. I want to meet her. I want to know her. And, but these relationships, they matter and they should expand our dreams, not limit our dreams, but you can't expect someone to support your dreams when you don't actually believe in yourself. And you're also operating in an old paradigm that you're going to, you just, you're going to attract better people when you work on yourself. And in our relationship, it's something we have regular communication about. I champion him. He champions me and together we're a winning team. Wow. And I, there's so much there. And I actually got chills and goosebumps. Obviously, you know a lot about how my wife has, has championed me. But from that moment, it brought, so brought back the thought in my mind. I remember when I was younger and they asked me, was I always was like up against adversity or obstacles when it came to my mom? And my mom was my best friend. But one of the things that she would always say to me is, it came from the Martin show, but she was like, you go boy. And my mom would always say that to me. And so you, him saying that to you, and his name is Jack, right? Mm-hmm. Jack yep. Daniels, Jack A. Daniels. Jack A. Daniels. So shout out to Jack. But one of the things is right there that set the right foundation. And, and the other thing that came to my mind as you were speaking was something that I tell people all the time when they come to me and they have an issue about trauma, right, is it's very hard to heal in the same environment that makes you sick. Yep. That was something that I learned early on. And it was like, yeah, so that's why it's very important to make sure that that new environment, it's one that uplifts you. And from the very moment that you met Jack and him saying that to you, it just felt like this is different. No one's it ever is, said but that. But I didn't recognize it. I almost missed it. Really? It was so different. Yeah. I think that that's another thing we don't talk a lot about is, again, it's that old self and new self. I almost missed it because it was so pure. Mm. And it was no drama. <laughs> so was he, no was, he, for it. was he adamant though, that I'm not going to play around. Like I need to stay on top of her. Or was it just like, Hey, you didn't know. And then six months later you see him at another event or did he know off the rip? And he was like, there's no way you're leaving out of here without book a meeting from a meeting. It's got to be a date after this. He was consistent from day one. And I didn't understand how to recognize that without the drama. Mm. So it was like, it was, it was just very, very pure. I actually, 
I actually, so I, I could tell my version of this since he's not here, <laughs> but I think the blended true version of it is I just was in this portal of it's like red pill, blue pill. It's like in this matrix of decision. And I was getting my car washed one Saturday afternoon. And I remember he sent me a text message. It was a really kind text message and sweet. And I heard the voice of God say, this is who you need to be paying attention to. You're about to miss it again. Mm. Because I had, there was another person that I had been dating, not exclusively at all, but before I had met Jack and the contrast, like it was in this moment, it's a busy day. It's a Saturday and it's a car wash in Atlanta. There's a lot of people because Atlanta is a stunting city. So people want to have their whip nice and fresh. I didn't think I knew the word whip, but I know the word whip. And, but it's like, sometimes you have these busy moments, but everything is still for you. And it's just a split second, but it, it's like, it slows down. And he showed me the difference between what was, was actively approaching me and someone who is always making excuses. Mm. And it was such a stark contrast that I actually called up Jack and said, I would like to take you to dinner. And I used it as an opportunity to apologize for not having the proper eyes to see. Now his version, if you ever talk to him or have him, he'll tell you a whole nother version. My version is the most accurate. Okay. It's all that matters. Okay. Okay. But I, from a, I think that humility is an important thing in building trust. And so I said, I'm sorry, I almost missed it. And because what I missed was not understanding his gift. And it's, it's, it's important. If you're going to be pursuing mutual pursuit, it's not all about a man pursuing. A man has to know that it's safe. And it is important that I want someone to see my gifts in a way that is not intimidating, but inspiring. And to this day, my husband, he told me the other day, Actually, I'm thinking about this right now. We had a conversation with how the my devotional 100 Days of Believing Bigger sold out a year's worth of books in 14 days, and we just got restocked. They It's not that they didn't have books. We just sold a lot of books. And I was like, I didn't even have time to promote this one. God breathed on this. My husband said, I don't want you to miss it. it would, I didn't even think about it. It was almost the same thing that I felt that day in that parking lot. So I don't want you to miss the way this is all happening because I have a tendency to jump into other things right when the thing starts growing and uh, you want someone who sees your gift in that regard Mm -hmm. I want to be a person who sees his gift in that regard so that's why I needed to apologize but humbly I needed to I I missed it because I didn't recognize and sometimes people's gifts will rub us the wrong way because they're rubbing our old habit our old self Anyway, I could, apparently I need to do some relationship seminars. I, I, a lot of my business and wealth seminars, our last one, we were talking about the mindset of prosperity. And I said, is an inside job or something? And I, I don't remember how it got into relationship. It took a whole hour and a half turn. <laughs> it took a turn. And I don't look at myself as a relationship expert specialist. Don't, don't come to me for that. I still think it's just another form of belief. Like, how do we build our beliefs in such a way that we can build the life that we desire? Yeah, no, and there's so much wisdom in there. I know that that's something that my wife and I have been very intentional on. Now, she owns her own business, not coming from entrepreneurship. So there's so many ways that many of us, no matter how long you've been married, can continue to grow. And you talked about now having triplets. And obviously, that changes your world so much because- A little bit. Just a little bit. And and it's just, but it's an amazing thing to watch the evolution to know that we both don't know what we're getting into, but we're going to make it work. And we're both going to challenge ourselves first and foremost, so we can be better for the other side so we can see this thing through. And so that's what's so powerful. And and it goes to the quote, and I can't remember who said it. I think it might've been Steve Jobs, but he says, you can never connect the dots looking forward. I think you can only connect the dots mm. or backwards. Or I, I'm butchering it a little bit, but I'm sure you've heard it. But yeah, so that's that's so powerful. Mm-hmm. I know we're coming up to the end of our time here, and, and this has been a phenomenal conversation. One of the last questions that I want to ask you is, now everyone sees where you are, and, and they've gotten a real 
in-depth look at your journey. And I'm sure they can go see very a lot more. But if you can, looking back, right, and connecting these dots, I think is the way that we'll say it on this one. If there was one thing that you could have changed going backwards or because I know we never like to to change or wish that anything because it makes us who we are today. Right? The adversity builds the character. But if there's one thing that you could have changed or you wish that you would have implemented sooner to accelerate your dream and your path on this journey, what would be that one thing? Hmm. I think that it's okay to want to go back and change some things. I mean, Whenever I think it's very canned to say, I everything I went through made me who I are. I wouldn't change anything. I I I think that the first thing that came to my mind is there are things that I would stop asking for permission and not worrying about my steps being too much, taking up too much space for people. And even just part of giving myself permission is also trusting my own intuition. The thing I was thinking about today, I was getting ready to do a live stream, but triplets and that didn't happen. <laughs> I was going to do one on how important it is to let go when it's time. Like sometimes we think that loyalty is staying it out. And there are times when it's important to work through it, but there's also very clear signs when it's time to let things go. Yesterday was a really beautiful day. I started a new business endeavor a few weeks ago that helps women and men, anyone, because money is green, but to help build e-commerce businesses and combines influence building and e-commerce. And I'm excited to start rolling that out for other people to get involved with it as well and to build their own income through online. But I was hesitating on some decisions I needed to make of letting some people go. And yesterday we had a great influx of women who said, this is what I want to do. I want to build this e-commerce uh, business and platform with you. At the same time, I've been trying to figure out like some things around childcare and with COVID it's difficult. It like literally fell out of heaven. Mm -hmm. And then I'm getting ready. At the end of the day, I get a message that someone that I needed to let go of says, I just got another job. I want to let you know so we can start transition. And I said, it all just worked out. Now I, I knew I needed to let this person go a long time ago. I just couldn't do it. Right. I, really, I know people think you're really strong. I, I, I just couldn't find the heart to do it. And the thing that I felt in my spirit was it's important. Like sometimes God will do it for you. And he's already taken care of the other things that need to be let go of. And the other people, you're not actually responsible for them or their destiny. And it just, it was like, you got to trust your intuition. You don't know what's on the other side of just being in alignment. You could call it obedience. You can call it your yes, but just being and staying in alignment. And you can't stay in alignment when there's things that are misaligning you, that are taking your attention, that are causing you to have more weight than you can carry. And I've done that more often than I would like to have done in my life. What I love about that, that I love about myself is that I am patient with people. Most people don't think I am, but I really am. <laughs> I have a strong work ethic, really high standard but so does Oprah and Martha Stewart and Jay-Z, okay? And B, and B. I have a strong work ethic, but I, I don't like to give up on people. But sometimes it's, I've got to reframe that I'm not giving up. I'm letting them go into a place that they belong because what I know now as a mama, I'm not compromising where I'm going and how I'm going to get there. And I can't carry weight because now I'm carrying princesses. Mm -hmm. And it's my job. I was, I was given the assignment of being their mom. And so I think it just hit me such in a heavy way yesterday. So would I do it differently? I wonder what I would do if I had at, what I would have even accomplished more if I hadn't waited for permission, hadn't waited for approval. And if I trusted my intuition in moments where I, I hesitated because I wasn't sure if I was doing too much, taking up too much space or being disloyal. I wonder where that would be. But the great thing about possibility and promise is that there is still a limitless life in me right now before me and God makes time. And so he's going to make up the time. And I believe it's going to be exponential. I don't believe I'm missing out on anything. Right. I believe everything is still in, is everything is still ready. But that's my answer, Casanova, to your question about what I would do differently. I know you said one word and you thought it was going to be short. 
<laughs> but but there's so much wisdom again for someone else they need the context of it so i never mind when it's something that's longer because it can allow someone to attach an emotion or a story to it of how that's relevant to their life and so i i love that you said that and the thing that came to my mind at the end was right you're right where you need to be yeah. and the thing that i always say because it's hard in this world no matter who you are no matter what type of success that you have social media has now made it that much harder to not play the comparison game yeah. because no matter what you're doing even if you're trying to give a ton of value you're very selfless you're a servant leader but now when you get on you see somebody else just released a program and they said hey i got ten thousand people you're like it got am i not doing enough and so thinking about it just like in that way you're right where you need to be and 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 i, I would love for you to, to finish this part off but what came to my mind is there's a, a a picture out there it's a meme and it shows three people at the uh start of like a, a fit, the start line of a racetrack and it shows two people basically getting out of the running and then the other person that's right there in the middle he has a rubber band around his back and he's actually three steps behind the start line but it shows that he's getting ready to obviously catapult ahead and then he'll be right on track. Yeah. So to understand that, again, what's for you is for you. And I know that you believe this. And when your time is ready, sometimes we're just not ready. It would have been dope to have you on in the first five episodes. Now we're in 150 episodes deep. But at those times, it's like I wasn't I wasn't ready. I, I wasn't prepared. But when it was time, I was I was confident enough that I would be able to show up and make it meaningful, not only for me and for the audience, but more importantly for you as well. And so I know that that's something that you're a firm teacher and believer in. Yeah, time is so I have a, an acronym, a double acronym that I'll share with your audience. And it's inside of I believe it's inside of 100 Days of Believing Bigger, my new devotional. And time stands for totally in my element. Now, mm. it's not my element. This is God's element, because I believe that God is the author of time and the ingredients that are in our life, the circumstances, the perfections, the imperfections, the challenges, but also the wins, everything, everything that is existing in your life right now are the perfect ingredients that God needs and will use to bless, build, advance, catapult, reinvent, prosper, heal, everything. Everything is because why? He created time. We're not out of time because <laughs> he right. created time. Now, I don't believe you take time for granted because when you time, you're totally in my element, but you have to trust in my experience. That's the other acronym for time. He knows better than we do. God knows better. And there is a level of one of the things I wrote in January 2019 at the top of the year, and it's really guided me that I always have to come back to. And it's just, I was journaling and this flew out of me. It's only God can make what God has already made. Mm -hmm. So if he made time and if there's something he wants to do, then I need to trust his timing to experience the promised land that he's already prepared. Like I don't have to actually make it, I need to have eyes to see it. And this right. is where dreams come in and desire comes in. I believe also the Bible says that God gives us the desires of our heart. I had a woman who emailed me the other day and she said, actually, she didn't believe in God. She says, I'm agnostic and I'm working towards becoming a believer, a believer in Christ. And your devotional is helping me with that. And she says, I finally understand who he wants me to be. And I thought my desires were always bad. We've been taught that our dreams are to be longed for and not live. We've been taught mm. that our desires are a reflection of selfishness and sin, as opposed to we're not just wretches <laughs> that we were saved by grace. I think that we were saved by grace because we were wonderful too. And so time is something that requires trust, humility, surrender, but it also requires pursuit. And I said earlier that when we pursue something that is part of self-care, doing something that you love because you love yourself and you give yourself permission to pursue it. And that thing about with the rubber band, what came to my mind is it's really recalibrating how we look at our readiness and the timing of it. So I might do something a little differently than other people do it, but I'm also going to get there in a way that other people won't because they weren't willing to do what I was willing to do. Right. And I can't tell you what that is, but this is why it's important to run your own race so that you can prepare in a way that is unique. I'm planning now for 2030. The decisions I'm making now, I want to be in position for 2030 because where I'm at now in 2020, not having to work, being able to have time off, not impacted financially by the pandemic, 
are results of the decisions I made in 2010. So now I have this decade perspective. This is part of what happens when you get some gray hairs. <laughs> and the other last thing I want to say, the reason why I wrote a devotional this year, I wrote it while I was pregnant. I could have got out of my contract saying, I don't have the time. It's not right. The reason I wrote a devotional versus a book about business or money or something that seemed more natural to my audience is I believe every time that I have focused on spiritual recalibration, everything else in my life expands beyond my comprehension, my business, my clients, my income, the opportunities. And so sometimes things might seem slow. That's the rubber band. It's the harness. It's actually like a harness that is giving you the time to actually collect the energy, the wisdom, and the spiritual capacity you're going to need for where it is that you're going. Because this is not really about a race. It's about a pace so that you don't have, like people who runners run, my, my brother was in track and I used to cheer him on. Like there's nobody who roots for my brother stronger than me. And when he would run, you look at the finish line. You don't look to the left. You don't look to the right. But when it's a pace, you can enjoy the journey. You can enjoy where the, the path to getting there. I used to be a tunnel vision person because I thought I was going to run out of time if I didn't do it all right when I needed to. And I was stressed about everything and didn't know it was stress. I called it a spirit of excellence. It was really stress. Right. And now I want to enjoy the journey and I want to take other people with me and I want to be impactful spiritually first. And that out of that, everything else comes back into alignment because I'm responsible for the life that God gave me. And I think that those who are listening, this resonates with you. Take a little time off of social media from getting your vision and actually maybe talk to heaven about it. I say, what is it you have for me? Help me recalibrate. Give me a fresh wind on my dreams. Give me a fresh belief on my dreams. Help me to believe bigger, but don't just ask to believe bigger. Ask for the courage, not the clarity. Clarity is not important. Ask for the courage to actually not only believe bigger, but to live bolder. Wow. I, I've, I'm not, I'll be honest, at 100, I, and I'm no journalist or anything. And normally I'm not at a loss of words, but you're, I just sometimes, and I told you, this is where it's bad that you're not scripted because I'm like, how do I even come after that? There's just so much wisdom. And I'm so thankful that I had the opportunity to be able to pull this out of you. And for anyone who watches it and listens to it, this is going to be life changing. There's your pace, right? That, that right there. I can't wait to tell my wife, you got to listen to this, right? We're not running race. It's your pace. I'm on my pace. Think about the little me and the big me, my little me, just get back to it. Right? So the last question, this is, again, I, I feel like I could have you on here for hours on end, but I know your family needs you. But the last question that I have is you spoke about it a little bit earlier and you talked about that little voice. And, the, and that's something that I always end the show with asking about that little voice. And that little voice says, you're not strong enough, you're not smart enough, or maybe you just don't have enough resources. What is the one thing that you would say to that person to get them to just take action? Mm. The only way to shut the little voice up is to act in opposite of what the little voice doesn't want you to do. Mm. It's literally the only way. You cannot rationalize with a fool. Right. So when you're trying to convince yourself even that you can do this, sometimes you just need to feel the uncomfort, the discomfort, I should say. You need to feel the uncertainty and you just need to take a step. And at certain times we call some things depression when I really think that it is we're at the fate, we're at the door of destiny. It's, if you're looking over the cliff and it's just a lot and it's, I can't, I shouldn't, I don't. And it's sometimes it's right. It's really the breakdown right before the breakthrough. Mm -hmm. I do think mental health is important. I do think that we should get the help and support. I had, I was in therapy twice a week after I called my wedding off six days before I was serious about taking care of myself. Cause I'm like, how, and I'd never had any therapy. I was like, I got to I, I knew that I was, my life was not my own. I'm here to show up for people. I need to show up for myself this time. Mm -hmm. And I think it's an important part of self-care. But at the same time, sometimes be careful about what you label things and how you label yourself. I'm not saying anything wrong with, there's everything right with getting professional help. And even in that, but I would say, instead of saying I'm depressed, I would say I am, I am stretching myself to believe bigger right now because of how I'm feeling. 
You see how the di slight difference in that is I'm not creating what I'm feeling as my permanent destination. Right. And so in the stretch is a new step and it may feel uncomfortable. Get help in the steps, but also just be really aware of how we talk to ourselves about ourselves. We're the most critical of ourselves, but you are responsible for yourself. Right. And I want you to know if no one has told you today that I believe in you. I don't have to know you, but I know that you listening to this is not a mistake. Your life is not a mistake. You are not whatever you have perceived as your mistakes and that there is a great destiny for you, that there are the promises, the dreams that you've heard. And you're just like, when is it going to happen? There's something great for you. And so I'm, I'm grateful to be a part of this moment with Dream Nation, but don't stop dreaming because dreams are where God brings our desires into fruition, into full being. Wow. There it is. If no one else, here's what I want to say. The thing that's on my heart is if no one else has told you today, I appreciate you. The oh. wisdom that you've given today, like even I've oftentimes looked for better words to, to even incorporate with Dream Nation. And I think one of the things that you said that I'll never, ever forget is we've been taught that dreams are to be longed for, not lived. And, and yes, there's so much action that comes with that, but understand that while you're here today, you have to make the most of it. You have to go after that dream and you have to make that dream a reality always, as I say, because otherwise it'll only merely be a fantasy. And so we have dreamers, we have doers on the show, and that's what you've been the whole part of your life. And, and I only say part because you have so much further to go. And I know that you like to identify, it sounds like with the old side, but not only are you young <laughs> on the external, but you're definitely young on the internal side. Thank so you. thank you again for coming on the show for anybody who wants to stay connected with you. And I'm sure there's going to be hundreds and thousands of people after watching and listening, where can they find you at? Yeah. Thanks for asking. So you can connect with me at Marshawn.com. It's M A R. S-H-A-W-N, not Martian, but Marshawn, <laughs> Marshawn.com. And if you click on a button called start here, you can get a free life class for me called Manifest Miracles. It goes into a lot of some of what we've talked about today, but there's also a, a complimentary workbook. So my coaching programs are, any, are, I'll just say they're high ticket, they're high end. So I've done this as a gift so that people can get an experience of what it's like to have a workshop with me. And then also, if you've um, been inspired at all by the concepts around belief, if you go to believebigger.com, you can see our book, Believe Bigger, our devotional 100 Days of Believing Bigger. And I'd love to, I'd love to cross pollinate the Believe Bigger and the Dream Nation community. Absolutely. Here's my thing. I want whoever finds this, no matter when you're finding this, I know at the, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to buy at least 10 copies of your book. And I want the people who reach out to either me or Marshawn and give the feedback on this episode. And this episode right here, we're going to release it very soon. Normally, and I don't, I won't even say this. I'll say this on camera, but normally we're about two months batched out on episodes mm. that we record. So it's been phenomenal. But this is an episode that I think going into 2021, people need to hear right now. So this episode will be released a uh, priority here within the next couple of weeks. And so I want anybody who hears this, why? watches this to reach out and I'm going to give you a free copy of the book and we'll even see if we can get somehow Marshawn to sign it. But uh, yes, this has been phenomenal. And again, Dream Nation, I hope that you really take action on all the wisdom that was done today and make your dream become a reality. That's all we got for this one. We'll catch you on the next one. That's all we got for this episode. Thank you for sticking around. That truly means a lot to me. And hopefully that means that we delivered massive value on this one. If you haven't already, the way that you could say thank you to myself and the team is just by heading over to iTunes and leaving a review and a rating. That's what iTunes loves to see. That's how we get out there even more. And I would definitely, definitely be grateful for it. I know the team would as well. Do me a favor and head on over to dreamnationpodcast.com. That's where you're going to be able to find all of the resources that we talked about in today's episode, as well as more exclusive content. And you'll also be able to sign up to our email list where we have more exclusive content. And we always love to hear the feedback from you all because you're our tribe. So remember, in the dream we trust, we'll see you on the flip side.